Hey YouTube, today we are going to discuss the term range of motion and we're going to try and do it in the context of bodybuilding. So what is a range of motion? A range of motion is the distance that the weight is going to travel during a lift. And what is going to influence that range of motion is individual leverages, so the length of your arms, the proportions of your arms, which part of the the, the forearm or the humerus is longer, same for the legs. Do you have more quads in proportion to your calves or the other way around? Uh, for the deadlift, the, the length of the arms is going to play a role. Some people, when they deadlift, the, when they lock the bar, the bar is on their thigh and it can be higher or lower depending on your leverages. So we already see that range of motion is not an absolute notion, it, it diverges from person to person. But there are certain standards that constitute a full range of motion. And let me say right now that these standards are 100% subjective because we are deciding that it's full based on our preconceived notion of what full means. For example, when you do a bench, what is a full range of motion? A full range of motion on the bench would be to go all the way down until the bar touches your chest and then to push all the way up until the arms or the elbows are locked. That's a full range of motion on the bench. Is it really full range of motion? Because if we're going down that path, I can make you lift with a bar that has an arc that is with a curvature which would force you to go even deeper because for the bar to touch your chest, because it's not straight anymore, it's here, you would need to really go deep to touch that chest. That's full range of motion or even worse, you could just do it with dumbbell and with dumbbell, you can keep pushing the shoulders back and tuck the elbows in as much as possible. That would be even more range of motion. It would be of course limited because eventually the dumbbell is going to touch your chest. And this is why for the most part, when you do dumbbell bench, you do it with less range of motion than with a barbell. The reason why we have preconceived notions of what full range of motion is, is because it is easier to judge. Meaning that for strength sports like powerlifting, you need to have an objective notion of what the full range of the lift is so that you can have people compete with each other. Of course, anyone who watches powerlifting knows that it's not working because nowadays people are finding ways to cut the range of motion short and there's nothing you can do about it because they're still completing the lift the way they're supposed to. But you see with all what I'm saying right now that the range of motion is not that divine notion that a lot of powerlifters like to present it as. It is something that is actually going to be really dependent on the way you practice the lift. And as I said, because it helps mostly as a measure for strength sports, it's not as important in that respect for bodybuilding because we don't care about strength. Or at least we're not being tested on it, we're being tested on the way our body looks. So what about Bodybuilding, why do bodybuilders need to care about range of motion? Well, it is because a muscle that is worked through the full range of motion stretches more and therefore is going to be bigger. That is the, that is the most commonly expressed idea of why we prescribe full range of motion to people. There's also the fact that Walking a muscle through its full range of motion is going to be the most functional as a bodybuilder who cares about that. But the truth of the matter is, if you always work in a shortened range of motion, the part of the range you're uh, missing out on could be some gains you leave on the table. Yes, but it's also going to potentially make you injury prone. Why? Because let's say you only quad a squat and one day you mess up your rep and you go a little bit too low. 
Well, you're not used to going that low because you always cut the range of motion short. So you might suffer injury. That's something we want to prevent. This is why I personally tell people that they should work full range of motion at least at some point during their training. You don't have to always go full range of motion. I personally, when I do presses, I don't lock my elbows. I never fully extend. Why? Because one, it's taking tension out of my tricep and two, it's this, it destroys my elbows. So why would I do that? It might be the same for you. I know that some people, when they lock their knees on the squat, they get knee pain. If, as, if that's the case for you, don't do it. There are certain things that are not really negotiable in a sense because I've never heard of people having pain when they do it. For example, on the deadlift, for me, you should be locking all of the joints in your body at the end of the deadlift, meaning your, uh, your knees, your hips, uh, and your shoulder so that you end up straight. You don't need to hold it straight for five hours, but you do need to finish strong and then reset and pull again. That's my personal opinion. I think that you won't find many people who get any type of pain doing that because that standing up motion is when all your joints are aligned and it's when your body is the strongest, when you hold the weight. But let's go back to the notion of full range of motion as being the best for hypertrophy. I personally agree with that. It's just, in my opinion, logical. You're taking the muscle through a longer distance. It stretches for longer, so it's under tension for longer, and then after the stretch is maximal, when it springs back, it is also going to be taken during that, through that positive, through that weight for longer. But you can also do some shortened range of motion lifts. The only thing you need to make sure you're doing when you do that is don't lie to yourself. If you're cheating on the range of motion, you need to know why. If the answer is because I can lift more weight, that's not a proper answer. You're a bodybuilder. The answer should be because I get better gains from it. That's a proper answer. And it's something that you're going to find can be actually very helpful. Cutting the range of motion is going to help you get stronger on the full range of motion lift. I know that some people disagree and would have you do full range of motion all the time. I do believe you should be doing full range of motion 80% of the time, but partials have their place and I'll make videos about them. I also want to insist on the fact that as far as range of motion goes, there is such a thing as too much, meaning you can, go, you can go too deep, you can overextend. For example, for bicep, I said it in my bicep injury prevention video to prevent bicep tears. Doing this on a curl, yes, it's full range of motion, it's also full range of stupid because you're going to hurt your tendons. You don't want to go all the way because at some point, the lengthening of the bicep is already at its max, at its peak pretty much. What is lengthening to keep the weight moving is the tendons. So you don't want to do that. You want to stand within the range where the muscle is activated and not the tendon overextended and then complete the rep and keep going. The same can be said for squats. A lot of people will go ass to grass and then they'll have a massive pelvic tilt at the end, which puts a lot of stress, stress on their lumbar spine. If that's you, then just cut the range of motion. Look at you in the mirror and the second you see your butt starting to shoot underneath, underneath your hips, stop and push up. I know I've seen tons of videos saying the butt wink is not dangerous. I just disagree with that. It, to me, it participates to the rounding of the lumbar spine and it is a risk when you squat. You might injure your back. So I would say be careful with that. As far as the deadlift goes, I will put my biases aside and say that 
I don't fully really understand people who cannot pull from the floor with any style. In my opinion, there should always be a style that you can use for pulls that are going to allow you to pull safely. Sumo Jefferson conventional. But I also accept the fact that the deadlift range of motion is fabricated. The full range of motion of a deadlift from 45s, 45s, we picked that side of size of disc, but it's it's a preconceived notion of what a full range of motion should be. We could be pulling pulling with 25, that would be even a deeper range of motion. So if you cannot, for the life of you, pull with 45s, pull from blocks. If that's going to prevent you from getting injured, pull from blocks, that's your full range of motion. And that's what I want to end the video on. Full range of motion is one of the area of lifting that is the most plagued by dogmatism of people who will tell you to either lift full range or don't lift at all. Well, I, I believe that that mentality is elitist and it's not helping anyone. You should lift within the range where you're comfortable. You should try and push the limits of your mobility, of course, but always safely. And you should incorporate both full lengthening of the muscle and then contraction with the full range of motion and partials where you're going to work the muscle in certain ranges that is going to allow you to get more gains by putting the two hand in hand. So that's it for the video. I hope it was informative. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you have any opinion about range of motion, things that I did not express, please tell me in the comments. I can tell you that the range of motion topic we're going to discuss a lot in the hypertrophy series. So it's going to be a recurrent theme on the channel. Thank you. Have a good day.